build, build, build. Race and production, then. Web development is huge. Thousands of people watch it. I'm dyslexic. Yeah! Customer experience. Yeah. Like my life is just subtly better. Bubble of concepts. Hello, wonderful people. I am here with the amazing Jack Harrington. We're going to have a little bit of a discussion about him, his story, his life, about the conference that we're at today. And maybe we'll even tease out some of his opinions on web development. Now, that's a lot to cover in the next 15 minutes. Yeah, no kidding. So I think we should just get let's started. Get it, let's go. First let's go. of let's all, this thing. for people who've never met you, I know a lot of people know your content, but for people who met you, who are you and what do you do? So I'm Jack Harrington. I do a YouTube channel called The Blue Collar Coder. We cover all things full stack. So a lot of web development stuff, a lot of React, a lot of Next.js kind of skewing towards more of the advanced topics. So, you know, think about like mid plus senior level of developer content that's suited for those sorts of folks. So yeah, it's really fun. And I've been doing it for about three years now and yeah, really enjoying it. Awesome. And I, I can definitely say his content's amazing. I actually oh, watched some fun. of your videos, so really like them. And you've kind of built a kind of career slowly where you've become this content creator. You're doing so much in the community. I could go on to like a full autobiography of how you got here, but why don't we just kind of boil it down to maybe three or four milestones that really set you on a path to sure. where you're at today? Yeah, well, I think the first thing, the first milestone would be that I'm a self-taught developer, right? I didn't actually go to school. I'm dyslexic. So I kind of started out just getting really excited about computers when I was like literally 13 years old, started coding. And by the time I was 16, I had I was getting paid to code, so that was very cool. But it was it was this process of learning and understanding and trying out new things. And so that's kind of been a seminal part of my career is just like getting in and digging in and trying new things. Because if I had stuck with the stuff that I was still coding in when I was 13, I wouldn't have a job, right? Because all of the technology we use today is wasn't around back then. So that was, I think, you know, part one was kind of setting me up on a path. You always just get really excited about innovation. And then to do the YouTube stuff, I started at uh, Nike. So I was a principal engineer, principal architect over there. I was kind of teaching teams how to do the hooks was a big thing that was coming out at that time. So I was going around and talking to all these folks about how to use React hooks. And I was like, you know what? I could, I could talk to 10, 20 people at a time at, at a company, or I could go on YouTube, make a video, right? And then have thousands of people watch it. And, and just kind of help people out. And I think that was the, the origin of that, but also just, you know, that if the kind of sense that my mother always gave me of sort of give back, you know, like, and, and software engineering has been so good to me and has given me this whole career that even without a college degree, I was able to, like, you know, raise a family and all that. And so, you know, that's really what I'm doing is kind of giving back to the community. I sure. genuinely, I, I love that story and the fact that you're giving back. It, I have used your videos to learn. I'm sure so many other people have. Thanks. So on behalf of all of those people, thank you. Hey, man, no problem. <laughs> Look at us. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? <laughs> yeah, here we go. With one Bet fake firm. Exactly. One, <laughs> one firm between us. Exactly. Okay, so we're here in London at the React Advanced Conference. Yeah. First of all, London. Have you been here before? Yes. Okay, at the last time, React Conference. At the last Actually, React yeah, yeah, yeah. Conference. Oh, I love what London. What did you think of London? It's great. We, at the last time I was here, we spent about a week, my wife and I, just going around. We were, we were clocking like a half marathon a day. Wow. Just walking around all like the museums and the great places to eat and the parks. The parks are unbelievably cool. So uh, this year, we're not doing a week in London. She's a big fan of Outlander. Oh, you're going to the Highlands? Going to the Highlands. I was just in the Highlands a couple weeks ago. Oh, dude. Yeah, we can talk okay. about this after. Yes, absolutely. Recommendations required. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're going up to Edinburgh. Am I getting that right? Edinburgh, yeah. And then you can even go further up into yeah, the yeah, Highlands yeah. and the countryside. Going with the beautiful. pronunciation though, Edinburgh. Edinburgh is all right. Okay. Oh, well, I'm not Scottish, so. Okay, yeah, there you go, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right, okay. I'm so excited. <laughs> I know, I know. We will get carried away. But um, we're here at React Advanced. Yeah, right. I know some people maybe aren't able to come to React Advanced. So why don't we just give them a bit of FOMO? Tell us about what you're excited about for the conference today. Anything you're looking forward to in particular? Yeah, I mean, there's some great talks here. But what I'm really looking forward to, and I've been to a couple of these Get Nation shows, the panel talks. When you just, you're with a whole bunch of other people, you're getting these great conversations going on. That's really fun. So you've got a couple of experts in the middle of like a big table. And then anybody gets to come and sit at the table and ask questions and get to be part of that conversation. 
I love that because yeah. I mean, kind of like you go, go up on stage and it's fairly, it's kind of a one-way conversation. You know, you're going over your slides and stuff, but I love that, that panel stuff. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. And I'm gonna be doing a couple of those in the afternoon. Awesome. And if you're at home, you're not able to make it. The cool thing about those panels is you can actually join from home. So they usually have a Zoom room or something set up so you can join the conversation. So definitely do that. And we always take a couple of remote ones. So yeah. Yeah, no, cool. awesome. All right. So now one of the questions which I kind of wanted to talk about was uh, just talking about web development in, in general. But web development is huge. I think a lot of times people yeah, will just be right? like, I'm oh a gosh. web developer. But there are so many sub-genres yeah. of web developer. What kind of sub-genre? of web developer would you describe yourself as? Oh, wow. I mean, I would say I'm, you know, I'm all about, from the very beginning, kind of customer experience, right? Mm. And so architecting the full customer experience, but in a, in a really iterative way. I really love when I'm on Teams, just continuously working on a UI and refactoring it until it's really something that works for folks. Using the web toolkit that we have in novel ways to present information and to you know create that customer experience that's really what i like that's yeah what I love that because oftentimes, especially as engineers who are surrounded by other engineers at conferences like this, we can focus on maybe performance and maybe focus on some of the statistical measures that are easy. But I think customer experience is the end goal, right? Yeah, yeah, people, yeah. You want people to use your site. So. Exactly. You want people to be going, oh, yeah, this is exactly what I want. Yeah. This is cool. No, for yeah. sure, for sure. And as you sort of have got that as a priority, how does that affect the kind of way that you, especially when you're creating content, what you focus on, how do you translate what you love and what you enjoy? And then maybe also some things that are important, but aren't necessarily sources of joy. How do you translate that into the content that you Yeah, create? exactly. So my channel is called The Blue Collar Coder. So the idea being that it's kind of workmanlike, you know, or we're building apps that focuses like very practical stuff. So when it comes to my channel, like, in general, the topics that I cover are very practically applied. So we always apply it within the context of some app that does something practical for folks. Like I think my most recent video is about brings in pet adoption stuff. And like we're creating an AI that helps you like figure out what pet you want to adopt. It actually turns out to be really cool. You know, you can say, oh, I want a, you know, a black lab or something like that. And it goes through and it finds like all the ones that are in the shelter. And then you can say, well, I want one that, you know, plays fetch and then it'll go and find that. And it's, it's really cool. So, but, but doing that in the context of practical things, I think is really valuable. Like you mentioned like performance and yeah, performance is important, but, and, and getting into the nitty gritties like that but I, I tend to find that at least me I like to apply stuff and so building stuff that actually works for folks that shows things also in a novel way I think is is, is really fun and engaging on YouTube for me. No absolutely for sure. and I and I love the fact that you use practical examples because oftentimes you can be in a bubble of concepts without talking about actual yeah um, okay, why am I learning this yeah, exactly you know and that's like, one of the things I try to do up front and I'm actually changing it around now, is present some way to like a, a mental scaffolding for stuff. Like this is what I'm gonna show you, but this is why I'm showing it to you. Although nowadays folks wanna get right into the heart of it. So that's what I'm trying to do with my newer videos is just like, you know, go straight into it. And then create that scaffolding as I go. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, as I introduce this topic, then I'd spend a little bit of time saying, okay, so this is why you're learning this. This is how you're gonna apply it in the future. That sort of thing. I think that thing that you just touched upon about this is why you're learning this. Like oh. You've been an engineer for a while. Yeah. And I think that I find super interesting as someone who's uh, more new in my career. There are oftentimes I've go, we've been doing this for a long time. I don't know why. Yeah. And from your perspective, what's it been like just watching the sort of software world, especially in the world as people learn, because you're often helping people get upskilled and learn new things. Has anything changed with software engineers or with web developers specifically over the course of your career? What have you seen that has maybe changed? And what are some of the things that just remain the same and keep coming back in circles? The need to learn the, the core skills of like debugging and being able to kind of dig in and figure out why stuff doesn't work. I think mm -hmm. that's the things that are most important, but are also, also the things that are kind of most seemingly I'm not as pervasive in the newer engineers that I found. They kind of, the, the moment they get, they get stuck on something, they kind of reach out and say, hey, I need help with this. And instead of actually spending, like saying, okay, 
I'm instead of trying to go out and find somebody to help me, I'm going to go and spend 10, 15 minutes trying to figure out what, what does that error message mean? How do I go in and dig, dig around and figure it out? Because those are the kind of skills you need as an engineer mm -hmm. to be kind of self-contained. And, and I think that folks need to kind of re-engage with that. One of the things that can actually help is working with a, a GPT, like GPT or something like that to try and have it try and figure stuff out. And then that, that's kind of like a half step. You yeah. know? But, but being able to kind of dig in and figure stuff out is sort of an old school thing, but I think it should be what it everybody Embracing wants. the grind of, so, ah. of software development, yeah. uh, because oftentimes the grind yields more treasure than just a solution yeah. itself. It yields uh, experience. Experience. And yeah. if you reach out to a person and you say, hey, this is broken, blah, 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 and, and it's an easy fix, right? They're going to fix it they're going to get the experience and not you, mm. right? And if you take it your, the time and say, well, I'm going to give myself, you know, a couple of minutes here and try and figure out what's going wrong, you get that experience mm. of, of, of actually going through that process. No, for sure, for sure. And I love this piece of advice, but I'm going to kind of ask you for advice for folks who are watching and for myself as well. Uh, usually when I do these interviews, I often say, oh, can you give some advice for someone who's just getting into software engineering or just getting into content creation? Why don't we flip it on its head first okay. and say, give me three sets of advice, one for the person who's just about to start as coding, someone who's just started, and then someone who's actually quite experienced, maybe is already a senior engineer or architect. Are there any lessons that you think could apply to each of them? And they may be totally different. Sure, okay. So for the person who's just starting out, build, build, build. Just build it. Don't watch videos and watch and watch and watch and watch and watch. And then, because what's gonna happen is you'll get overwhelmed by all of, oh, this guy did that and that guy did that. and. What you want to do is learn it, build it, learn it, build it. And that, that, that fingers on keyboard building stuff, that's what, are, that's what is going to build that experience. Uh, for that mid-level level developer, the, for, the person who's kind of continuing on, I think the, the advice around don't jump to ask someone to fix it right away because if, as a mid-level developer, you'll probably be on call. Things will probably break in production and, and, at that point, right, you know, it's, <laughs> you're not going to have the AI sitting there going, hey, you know, you've got to, you got to learn things like you need to understand every piece of code that you put into production. So if ChatGPT writes your code for you and you don't understand how it works, right, that's a problem because if it breaks in production, then you're hosed. And then I would say for the, the senior level developer, always, and this is my kind of basic maxim, always keep learning, right? Don't say, oh, I've seen this pattern before you know, and, and, and not learn it because there's always subtle variations on stuff and just, you know, kind of always keep learning, keep learning new things, keep those skills fresh. Awesome. Now, I think those were three amazing pieces of advice. And uh, last but not least, I like to wrap up our interviews with a couple of fun topics. The first one I'm going to ask is what has been bringing you joy lately? Ooh, that's a great one. Little things around the house. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like little improvements on stuff. Like I... My studio set up at home, right? It, it, I, it was one of those things where I had to go and hit a couple of buttons to get the lights on, to get the camera on, to get all those sort of things going. I put those all on hue switches, and now I literally just go studio, and it just oh, that's awesome. goes up, you know? And it, that, it, just those little things, ironing out those little annoyances in life, I think it's kind of cool because you're like, oh, wow, like my life is just subtly better you know and so i think that's one of the things that i'm finding joy in recently awesome and in general what are you looking forward to in the future could be technology could be not technology just anything that you're looking forward to dune messiah oh i, I love dune okay yeah. we've got another thing to catch up on. oh yeah yes dune uh, 2 or well, dune 1 dune 2 were phenomenal denis villeneuve is incredible and the fact that he literally said like oh, i'm gonna take some time off after this movie and then i heard in an interview just recently he's like yeah, I don't want to. I'm going to go make this in Dune Messiah. And I'm like, yeah, Dune Messiah is going to rock. That is yeah. awesome. Awesome. I'm very excited. All right. Before we go, where can people find you on the internet? Yeah, you can go to YouTube, uh, search for my name, Jack Harrington on YouTube. A lot of folks do. You'll find my channel and uh, or at Jaher on there, J-H-E-R-R. -R. And I'm also on X and Blue Sky and LinkedIn. My DMs are still open crazily. I also do a podcast with my some Two other lovely folks, Front End Fire, and we catch up every week on the week's Front End News, so go check that out too. Awesome. And you could also come to React Advanced London next year 
he might be around and you'll be able to see him in person. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you are at home and we will see you later. See you later.